I've been seeing so many sensory sound design videos like this on social media. A massive shout out to Will Byron. Thank you for doing an amazing video inside of DaVinci Resolve where you taught these sound design techniques. I'm just gonna be teaching it inside of CapCut and how you can get such cool sensory sound design in CapCut. A quick preface, I'm using paid for subscriptions like Artlist and Envato Elements to get my sound effects. If you don't have those paid for services, go to freesound.org or pixabay.com and you'll be able to download sound effects for free. All right, let's get into CapCut and make a sick edit. The first sensory effect we're gonna do is a cutting to ticking sound. You're gonna need a camera shutter or some sort of ticking sound that allows you to cut exactly on the beat. Let me play the example that I have. Once you have your shutter clicking sound, we need to cut our clips to the duration so that the ticking happens when the cut point happens. I'm gonna go ahead and drag my first clip onto the timeline and trim it so that it happens exactly when that clicking sound happens. Because we now have the right duration of our first clip, I'm gonna go ahead and drag the other clips right on top of it, select all my clips and click W to delete the back half. Let's see what happens when we line them all up. I love that. We just need a couple more clips in order to fill out our sequence here. See what that looks like. It is looking fantastic. Here we get to apply a really, really cool zoom effect. Select your first clip. Because all of these are the same duration, it's gonna be as seamless as this. Add a keyframe to your first frame of the clip. Now click the down arrow and click back one. Add another keyframe and let's drag that keyframe all the way to the end. On our first keyframe, we're gonna make sure it says 100, and on our last keyframe, let's make that 130. Now when that video plays, you can see that we have this zoom effect. I'm gonna go ahead on my clip and click Command C to copy it, and then highlight the rest of my clips, right click and say Paste Attributes. This is gonna bring up your Paste Attributes panel, where I'm gonna deselect Blend, Canvas, and Audio, and just leave Location Size turned on. Let's go ahead and click Paste. Once you have your zoom applied to all your clips, go ahead and select your clips, right click and say create compound clip. From here, we're gonna go on our compound clip and scroll down to motion blur, where we can apply the motion blur. I like to make it forward and leave my blur at 100%. You can see here, if I toggle with my arrows, wherever we're zooming into the image, it's applied that motion blur onto our clip. So now what we get is this cool warp effect as our clips zoom in. As the ticking ends and we've come from this high action moment, I wanna have a cinematic riser or cinematic hit that indicates we're moving on to the next sound effect. I've just selected this portion of my song where the song builds up and then we hit the cinematic kind of climax and then it goes down. So hear what this sounds like. If the song that you're using doesn't necessarily have a cinematic hit or riser, go ahead and drag your riser into that portion. I'm just gonna show you for reference sake exactly what this sounds like if we don't use the song and just use a riser. Very cool still, it has the same effect. We're building up to something. So I like to position my song so that as that hit happens, our fast motion ends. I'm gonna just leave this riser in and drag the volume way down. Our next effect is called break in pacing. This is a super cool effect because we can use it before or after action, either to give us a moment to breathe before we move into a high intensity moment, or like we've just seen with the ticking, afterwards. For the break in pacing, you're gonna look for a clip that's either a wider shot to contextualize where you are in terms of the location or an action that indicates that we're closing off the scene. So with this clip, he's putting on the goggles. We're gonna be a little creative and reverse that. So it looks like he's just flown the, the drone and now he's taking off his goggles to end that sequence. I don't like how he shuffles them in the beginning, so I'm gonna trim that beginning portion and put it onto here. Now we can see that our clip is not long enough for the sequence. So what I'm gonna do is select my clip, go to speed, and actually drag that speed down a little bit to 0.6. Because our clip wasn't shot in slow-mo, we're gonna get a bit of choppiness, you can see. We don't want that look, so apply your smooth slow motion and change frame blending to optical flow. This is gonna blend our frames together and we get that cool smooth slow motion. The next thing to do is I don't want our song to overpower this kind of break in pacing. The song is intense as is, let's tune it down a little bit. I'm gonna add a keyframe right before we go and cut to this new clip and I'm gonna add a keyframe right after. And on the second keyframe, I can go ahead and drag that down a lot. Let's hear what that sounds like. I really like that. I'm just gonna space them out a little bit more so we still get that hit. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Now what we need to do is environmentalize our sound a little bit. Let's go ahead and find some atmospheric sounds for this break and pacing. 
This higher pitch atmosphere may work, but I think I want something with a bit of a low rumble. Audio jump. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds perfect. There's some great bass. Let's use that one. Let's hear what the sequence sounds like just with the atmospheric dark rumble. The reason we're still seeing this choppiness within this video is because the slow motion is still applying. Now just think, in your scene, what, what kind of natural noises would you be hearing? I see us on a track, I'm hearing some wind sounds. Let's go ahead and bring in an environmental wind sound and hear what that sounds like. I'm gonna mute my atmosphere and let's hear. Coupled with the dark rumble. Finally, for break and pacing, I'm gonna apply a breathing sound. If you were using a nature shot, you could apply some wind and rustle through trees, but because we have a character in our sequence and we've come through a high action zone, I think it'll work. Let's see what it sounds like. I really, really like that. So now let's re-enable all of our clips and hear what this sounds like. I think the, the, the breathing is coming in a bit too soon. That's sounding and looking really, really good, guys. Let's move on to our next one. This next part of our sound design is the ASMR or hyper-realistic sound effects that we can use. All I've done is I've gone online and found sounds that would match the action of what our character is doing. For instance, this scene, our character is putting in a memory stick or a power cable, and what we've used is a handgun clip insert sound. Let me show you what that sounds like. When you're searching for your sound effects, don't always try and be super specific on what your character is doing. Rather search for insert and see what different sound effects you can find for the insert sound. Another example is here where our character puts a screwdriver to screw in the propellers. I've used a Walkman cassette insert and let me show you what that sounds like. Even though it's a cassette, our sound design is believable. And then what I've done in addition is I've added in our open field wind sound back to the beginning portion because we're in this open field. So whatever your character is doing, use sounds that match that action. And remember that you don't necessarily always have to use the exact sound of what that person is doing. In a backwards way, we need to now apply music to this first portion of our video. Because we have this chopped up music bit which had the ticking and then we moved into this break, I'm gonna go ahead and drag my music up Move that up so we can drag it some more. Drop our volume on this back half and hear what that sounds like. Our sequence is really coming together. The fourth and last technique is the environmentalizing of our music track or sound effects. The environment manipulation is one of my favorite parts of this because you get to make the music or your sound effects sound like they're coming from your environment. Because all of our other shots are exterior shots, and by that I mean our character is outside, the only different type of shot that we have is where our character is inside of the car. So what I'm gonna do is play with my music so it sounds like our character is listening to the song from inside of the car. All you need to do is select your music track. I'm gonna go a couple frames before our clip starts and blade our music and I'm gonna go a couple frames after and blade our music as well. And I'm gonna pull our music clip onto the top layer. Now to smoothen this effect, let's go ahead and add some extra frames onto the top and tail of our other music tracks. So we have something that sounds like this. Perfect. I'm gonna apply some crossfades to all three music tracks again, just for the smoothness. Go to voice changer. Now, as much as it says voice changer in CapCut, these effects still do apply to our music. And what we can do is start to play with different effects. Let's try energetic. That kind of increases the pitch, which is quite cool. If we go to low, that could work, it changes the pitch as well. For this one, I really love the way vinyl sounds. It sounds like it's coming off an old radio. And what's great about CapCut is we can increase or decrease our strength as well and the noise. So let's just decrease that a bit and hear what that sounds like. I love, love, love the way that sounds. Let's just make sure that it's smooth in the way the sound transitions. And there we go. Those are four easy sensory sound design techniques that you can apply directly inside of CapCut. Let's see what our final sequence looks like.